I'm at Fellin Pulliston on the Irvick Estate. Um, it's a beautiful afternoon here, so I thought it would be really nice to just call down here for a little bit and to just have a chat really about the project. Um, I'm really sorry that I can't be with you all today. I would love to be there, um, but logistics, life, all that stuff. So I thought the next best thing is if I come down here and just do a little film for you all. So we're just coming through the main gates now to Felin Pulliston. So this is the Felin Pulliston end of the Erdig estate. It's a National Trust estate that it was be bequeathed to the National Trust in about 1976, I do believe, by the York family who are a very old family who have lived in Wrexham for ooh, hundreds of years. And they were quite an interesting and an eccentric family. Um, and they had quite, uh, how can I put this? The lines were quite blurred between upstairs and downstairs on the York estate. So it was more like a community here and the family all sort of connected really well with the staff and even the staff had their portraits painted, which is quite unheard of. Um, so yeah, it was a little bit of an unusual setup by all accounts, but uh, really interesting. We worked here for a total of about 10 or 11 sessions, I think. This is the Fallon Pulliston Eco Centre and this was our base, this was our HQ um, for quite a number of weeks. Uh, we used to have lunch here to start, so had some very creative lunches. I think Ben was the soup king and used to create some wonderful soups. Ben is famous for his soups, I believe, and uh, well he is with us anyway. So we're approaching a structure, it's an outdoor structure and typically we would come in and have a chat about where we were at with the project and where we felt we were going with it and to make group decisions and making group decisions is something that was absolutely crucial for this project. It was co-created from the start. Um, which means that we all got together and we didn't know at the start of the project what the outcome was going to be. All we knew was that we were going to work together and we were going to explore the space that we were in and get to know each other and we were going to see where that took us. And it soon became apparent that this project and the outcomes attached to it were going to very much be about here about this sense of place and about how we interacted with this environment and, and also how it interacted with us really as well. Um, we spent quite a lot of time walking and talking and we recorded what we saw, where we saw it and when we saw it. So we used photography for that and we i also used a dictaphone and sort of recorded little snippets of conversation and we also shot small videos little short vids um and they were of anything that felt significant i guess um conversations that we had we were here from the end of september through to december so the land around us changed quite a lot during that time um, for the first ooh, couple of weeks, we were right slap bang in the middle of mushroom season. And that sort of kicked off the project, really, because we had a collective interest, really, in fungi or fungi. Never sure how to say that correctly. Um, and in mushrooms. And Dell was really knowledgeable about the mycelium network, which I admit I had limited knowledge about initially. I learned quite a lot myself from listening to what Dale had to say um, and we also had Dan in the group who was really knowledgeable and, and Ben knowledgeable too ab about mushrooms, wild mushrooms, foraging um, and that became our starting point really and you'll notice on the map that we ended up producing that the mycelium network features really heavily on that. Um, the strands of the mycelium sort of permeate the whole map and it became quite a good visual metaphor really for it link you know it linked up our experience here together our journey together if you like so this area here was one of the first areas that we explored and we discovered 
so many different kinds of wild mushrooms. Incredibly beautiful, actually. Um, and we discovered a sort of a, um, a trail of mushrooms growing down a fallen tree. And I can honestly say it was one of the most beautiful things that I've ever seen. They were porcelain mushrooms, apparently. Very white, very delicate, like porcelain, as the name suggests, and stunning. I can safely say that it has been one of the most memorable projects that I've ever worked on. And yes, that's all for all the right reasons. <laughs> so it's been wonderful getting to know everybody who's been involved with this project. And one thing that stands out for me is that I think we did all work together as a really cohesive group. We were able to work together in a way that was productive, but also really, really special and really enjoyable. Um, I think Dal summed it up really well when he said that, you know, it's just nice to come to places like this and to be with decent people and, you know, to be able to take the time to be out in nature, to marvel really at, at the natural world, to be in the moment, to connect with other people to really look at what's around us and to you know we did quite a bit of foraging we made tea from some of the herbs that were growing locally and we recorded all of these things i'm just by the riverbed now and it's absolutely beautiful i'm just going to step down for a minute and the sun is shining on the river i'm just going to point the camera up there you can probably see my shadow there okay Birds are singing, and it's absolutely idyllic. Very, very beautiful day here today at Fallon Bulliston. And I'm just reminded here of the time that we came out and did some sketching here, because Dell, as I'm sure you can see from the map, is uh, extremely good at sketching and very good at drawing. And it became apparent really early on that. Dell's creations must be a part of, of the map. Felt really important. And although I'm not going to carry on walking all through the estate, we did on a number of occasions walk right the way through. And it was very interesting, the things that we observed that felt significant. I'm reminded of the some ash trees over there that have got ash dye bark. And I have this image in my head of Sean sitting under one of those trees. I think he was rolling a ciggy, actually, but looking very content under that tree. And we noticed that the ash trees had branches circling them, you know, that had obviously fallen off, maybe from the ash die back, and that they'd been placed, sort of circling around the trunk of the tree. And we wondered why that was. Was it to keep animals out? Was it to record how much die back there had been? Was it to mark them out for the people who work on the estate that their trees that have got ash die back in the same way that people used to put crosses on the doors of plague victims? As you can probably see by now, or as you know, we ended up producing a map of our time here together. And a map felt appropriate to record our journey through the estate and our journey together over the weeks and months. Just like to say it's been an absolute pleasure and a joy working with you all and I know that I certainly feel that you know I, I benefited from this too. Um, it certainly I think it had the effect of making me make more time to slow down and to just make time to just be in the moment and it taught me that the natural world is a great catalyst for that you know if we go walking and we're out in nature nature does the rest it, it's it's like a balm like a healing balm just that act of walking and listening and looking and being is healing. It's really, it's really good for us. Okay, so I hope that 
you all enjoy today. Have fun, be good and all that stuff and hopefully I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye now.